Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt. Last week we were in the Mazda Miata, so it's only right that we spend the subsequent week in one of the closest competitors to that car, the Toyota GR86. And despite the simple nature and modest price tag here, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. So today we're gonna take a tour of all the coolest things going on with the GR86, then we're gonna get out on the road and see how it drives. Let's get into it. <laughs> First is the fact that this is largely a Subaru underneath the skin, much like the way that the Supra is largely BMW under the skin. And there are still a lot of reminders of how Subaru it is, in fact. Of course, we have it on the engine cover itself. That's a pretty standard one, being a Subaru engine. But if you weren't paying close enough attention, you probably would have missed on the door sill. Subaru Corporation for your VIN. You've also got a little Subi bit right here, manufactured by Subaru Corporation. And lastly, you would never see this. Lord DeMuro didn't even show this, but right here on your wiring harness for your trunk, you do have a little Subaru badge. Oh, and we can't forget the Subi key as well. And since we made reference to the Supra in the last point, we have to talk about aero. Now the Supra is covered in a bunch of fake venting, which people are really triggered by, but here on this GR86, it's all functional. This cools the engine. This, up here, it is fake, but down here, it does pass through and it is real. You can tell that it's coming through out the back and you can see that it is functional. Again, bringing air past the high compression wheel area and then around the back, we do have a bit of a diffuser. Subtle, but purposeful. And this next one is hidden in the settings menu, but if you just can't be bothered to be on Facebook anymore, it is a cesspool of nonsense and old people, you can get rid of it. And if you're worried about keeping track of people's birthdays, basically the main reason for Facebook existing now, you don't have to because now you can keep track of it in your GR86. You can add people's birthdays in here. And is your wife mad at you because once a year you forget your anniversary? Well, the same thing here, you can keep track of your anniversary in your car. Thanks, Toyota, for making marriages stronger all over the world. And our next point is in the infotainment once again. Hopefully you never have to use this. No one's ever asked about this before, but take a look at this. We click on roadside assistance, and then all of a sudden we have a different icon. That one's a tow truck. This one is a different tow truck with a crane. What? How is it? Wh how? Why? And then we're talking rear seats. Yes, the 86, as well as its sister BRZ, is a two plus two, which means you have rear seats. But obviously, this is the only seating position that's comfortable for me. You have absolutely and quite literally zero legroom. Now, if you do move this forward, you see you still have a floor mat. Who is this for? Now, I, I will remind you that these GR86 floor mats are a $180 option. I don't know if this floor mat is included in the $180 floor mat option, but I really hope I'm not paying for this because it's literally never going to be used. But anyway, when you actually look back here, it's still pretty nice. You have the two-tone um, soft text as well as the Alcantara in here. You do have Isofix points, but Toyota really knows that really no one's gonna be back here. So you just have seat belts, the same materials, but no vents, no cup holders, really nothing to charge, and they know no one's gonna be back here. And then speaking of expensive things that probably aren't worth it, we're gonna talk about the exhaust. Now this has an upgraded GR exhaust system. It is $1,700. It does sound good. It drones a little bit. We'll talk about it more behind the wheel. But one thing that you will notice, and again, Father Doug didn't even show you this, it does have GR printed on each side of the pipes. Sounds good. I don't know if it's worth $1,700 though. And for this next point, we're back under the hood to talk about the engine. This is basically a Subaru, well, it's not basically, it is a Subaru engine that Toyota has paid for the privilege to put their name on. It used to be a two liter. Now it's 2.4 liters of naturally aspirated Boxer Fury. Power is up to 228 horsepower, up about 25 from last gen, and torque is about 185 pound feet. Again, an improvement and this car is equipped with a $75 GR air filter that you can't see and can't feel, so I might, I might leave that off the spec sheet. Nice engine though. Again, they fixed the torque hole and we'll talk about that more behind the wheel. And we're gonna to touch on styling briefly. This does look very similar to the BRZ from Subaru, but there are some differences. The most predominant one being the grille shape is a little bit more frowny than the smile that you'll get from the BRZ. 
This color is called steel, which is a fancy name for silver, but you do have baby Supra running lights. I really like these. In the Supra, they're a little bit skinnier, more sharp LEDs, and they're just bigger. So again, very similar. And then around the side, you'll probably notice this. This is a $160 fender insert from GR. You do have black wing mirrors, which is very cool. Nice sculpted rocker panel here. And then this is interesting here. You have to have this because the bodywork doesn't cover the top of the tire. So you have to have this fang for regulation purposes, but it's molded into the bumper here. It looks like it's more tacked on here. Then we talk about the rear wing. This is what you get stylistically for your premium package. It looks like it's a little bit tacked on over the normal uh, rear wing, but it does look pretty good. And then of course you've got your diffuser and dual exhaust. And while we're back here, I do want to talk about some rear end details. Now, this is your reversing camera, which is kind of just in the middle of the tailgate. Now, do you remember the Miata from last week? It had it just kind of in the middle of the bumper. I guess this is an improvement still, just kind of, kind of in the middle of, of the trunk, which is a little bit strange. And then, if you were wondering about the trunk release, again, the Miata's was down here, which you're going to get your finger very dirty for, but you'll see this black stripe that goes all the way across the trunk. This is not a full width tail light. This houses your trunk release right there. And then this, again, is a bit of an added option. $160, apparently every option for the GR86 is $160. But if you look closely, it does say GR86, so maybe that's worth it. But with that, I think we go ahead and go into the trunk. Now, it's, it's not a huge opening, and I guess that's the biggest thing that hampers the practicality here, because when you actually get in here, you have a fairly decent sized trunk. Your rear seats do fold. You can fold them from the back here, although I put stuff in there, so I can't really reach it, but it's a decent size. You also have some styrofoam down here where you would have a spare tire. Now, you can remove this styrofoam and buy a used or a spare tire from the previous generation, I should say, and you can put it in here, it'd be no problem, but again, Having this trunk this size and being able to fold the rear seats is what makes this wildly more practical than the Miata we were in last week. And then we're back inside and we're gonna talk turn signal. Now this is the really annoying turn signal that when you flick it all the way down, it, it re-centers itself. So you have to go like this to turn it off. It's just a stupid design. BMW did this for a number of years, but then they realized that it was dumb. So they got rid of it. Why is it here? And then the steering wheel itself. This, I think, is literally just a copy-paste from last generation. It looks and feels exactly the same, except now it has GR down here at the bottom. And it's just, it's really skinny, like no girth at all to this wheel. It's the antithesis of the BMW M Sport steering wheel. Didn't the Supra also have kind of a skinny steering wheel? I think so. And this is the manual car, so obviously you have a manual shifter, but this is the upgraded GR shifter. You can see the detailing here. This is a $150 option. So apparently not everything is $160. This is a bargain at $150. And then wheels and tires. We do have an upgraded 18 inch gunmetal wheel. It looks very familiar to previous years that we've tested and it's still wrapped in a Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tire. Very good, very aggressive tire. I love the front end on this thing. And again, we'll talk about that more behind the wheel. It is a bit loud. That may be due to sound insulation, Topher thinks it is because of this tire, but lots of grip and I like the front end on it. So maybe a worthy trade-off. And then talking about the premium package, the premium package here takes this car from its $29,000 starting MSRP and ups it two grand to $31,000. But you do get a good amount of stuff. You get these suede and synthetic leather seats. You even have Alcantara on the headrest. That's not something you find really anywhere. You got a nice little contrast there, but you also get Alcantara in a bunch of places on your door card on each side, and also up here above your gauge cluster. Who asked for this? But you do also have two level heated seats. Good things to have with the premium package. And now we're talking gauge cluster. You can see it's fully digital here, which is really, really nice. You do have some customizability, so you can see lap timing, you can see your torque and horsepower readout, which is really cool. Again, you can see that they fixed the torque hole, which is right about here. So that's very nice to see, G meter, etc. But if you don't like this view, you can go on to track mode, hold this for a couple seconds, and now it's a more graduating, more dramatic, more sporty readout. Cool. And then we'll touch on the head unit. I know we talked about a couple things already, but this is the upgraded eight inch unit. 
it's pretty basic. There's not even native navigation in here, but you do have wired uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is what you're gonna use anyway. So I think this ends up being fine. You also do have a reverse camera, which, which isn't terrible. I don't mind it, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty basic in here, but it should be for the price point. This is a driver's car. Keep your eyes on the road. And we didn't talk about these enough. These are your traction buttons. Do you want traction off or do you want traction off in fast mode? Now take a good look at this interior here. What do you not see? Could it be cup holders? Where are the cup holders? Well, they're in here, which then kind of results in not really anywhere for you to put your phone. Hmm. Now, like we've been saying this whole time, this is one of Toyota's first GR products, and they're very proud. They have GR everywhere, but no GR logo is as cool as the start stop button, which you can't see it right now, but it does light up. It doesn't pulse like a heartbeat or anything like you get in a Jaguar or a Lamborghini, but pretty cool in a $30,000 Toyota. And this is just a weird thing I noticed, but this is like the most simple, basic rear view mirror that I've seen in years. Honestly, my 2008 Passat that I learned to drive on had a more robust rear view mirror than this. I kind of like it though. And then I just want to touch briefly on the interior design. You can see it's largely carryover from the previous generation. There's a few things that have been updated. We talked about the digital instrument cluster, the bigger center screen, and then these little knobs down here, but largely it's the same familiar design. And the last thing we'll talk about is price. Now, like I mentioned before, these GR86s start at $29,000. It's $31,000 to start for your premium package. And this one, as tested, with all the $160 options, comes in at about $34,000. Still under that magical 35 k mark. And there's a lot of fun to be had at that price. So let's grab the key and I'll show you what I mean. It's a bigger engine, it's more powerful, it is faster, but it's still by no means wildly quick. Again, we went from two liters to 2.4. It is still the boxer four cylinder from Subaru, so nice low mounting position keeps the weight low. Again, the balance is something that we'll talk about a little bit later. That's what you really get in this car that's really, really rewarding. In a straight line, not wildly exciting, 228 horsepower, uh, up about 25, 185 pound-feet of torque. Um, so it's not gutless, but it's not gonna thrill you at a drag race. But again, this car has never really been about that. This car has been all about, Jesus. This car has been all about the corners. The other thing that I'll talk about is we have the six-speed manual here and this, like the Miata, doesn't have rev matching, but this is a joy to rev on your own. This actually, this car, two years ago, uh, when I had it as a press car for a week, was really when I kind of started to learn heel and toe downshifting. And I'm by no means like perfect at it, but a lot better than I was. But it's just so much fun and it's so rewarding to row your gears in this thing. Now I will say, in relation to the Miata that we were in last week, and I'll kind of settle it down here to talk about this. In relation to the Miata last week, this transmission is a lot less forgiving, especially when it's cold, before everything's had a chance to heat up. This is gonna jerk you around a bit more. But for this next point, we're gonna hold this. We're now in track mode. We've got our gauge cluster that's changed. We've got traction off. And now we're gonna talk about the best part of this car. It's the balance. We'll head into this corner. Easy to downshift. Perfect. And then this is it right here. The balance on power steps out beautifully. That's what you get here. That's what you're paying for. That is the beautiful part of this car. See, it's not gonna hold my hand. It's not gonna baby me if I miss a shift or if I miss a rev but it's a beautifully balanced chassis. The grip here is great. It is a strut front. It is not a, a double wishbone like the Miata was, but it's just good. The chassis is so good that it translates grip to those PS4 tires so well. Oh, multi-link rear, Torsen LSD out back, rear wheel drive, Pilot Sport 4 tires. 
This is the beautiful part of this car. It's such a well-balanced chassis. It steps out so naturally and organically. If you are, again, and I don't want to keep positioning this car as like a, like a getting to know you or getting to know you manual edition or anything like that, but if you are interested at all in actually pursuing like track or high performance driving and you want something that you can absolutely get to the limit and experience what a car is like at its limit in a safe manner without feeling like you're gonna wrap it around a tree at 100 miles an hour, this is the car to get. The chassis is beautifully balanced. It will make you shift properly. You can understand the balance of a car and how it's gonna react under certain circumstances. And that's what I really, really like about this car. So those are the 23 most interesting things about the GR86. If you guys couldn't tell, I really like this car. The balance, the chassis, the grip, the organic nature of behind the wheel experience, and it's still relatively practical. So you're getting a lot of sports car for your money here. So thanks to Toyota for letting us have a go. Thanks to you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.